Greetings captains and welcome back. It is good to talk to all of you again today and today we are previewing the tier 8 premium German carrier, uh, the Graf Zeppelin. Now before I get this video going, please keep in mind a few things. She is a work in progress ship, which means that everything about her can and will change. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that this ship is provided by Wargaming for testing purposes. These are all things I just have to say. So, on to the actual preview in itself. Graf Zeppelin. Good or not that good? That's a question I've been asking myself for the last little while, and I'm very, very, very conflicted about it. Because there is things about her that are really great. Uh, one of them being the fact that she just has absolutely tremendous striking power. Take a look at what she has. Her squadron layout is two fighters, three torpedo bombers. Three torpedo bombers, five planes per squadron, 15 torpedo bombers total. Now, assuming that you lose certain torpedo bombers um, you know, by AA and stuff like that, you're still going to be able to get a good amount of torpedoes through. Now, take a look at the torpedoes themselves. Max torpedo damage is 10,500. They are relatively short-range torpedoes, but they do a ton of damage. The draw pattern is in the shape of a cross. Not the world's best drop pattern, but perfectly workable. Generally speaking, from every squadron, if you do it right, you should be able to hit about, now I would say, probably three out of the five torpedoes, you should be able to hit relatively comfortably. So, typically on a strike, I'm usually looking at anywhere between, I would say about nine hits and above against the battleship, against cruisers, maybe a little bit less. But still, tremendous amount of striking power. With these many torpedo bombers, you can go around and blap stuff. Really, like you can see a full HP, you know, insert battleship name, and if the battleship doesn't have the world's greatest torpedo protection, you're going to be able to blap them. If not outright blap, at least so much damage that they have to pull out a line. So that's great. That's fantastic. You're able to do tons of damage. So what do you not like about the Graf Zeppelin? Well, the thing I don't like about the Graf Zeppelin are the fighters. I don't like them at all. I've lost fighter fights to Shokakus, I've lost fighter fights to Enterprises, I've just lost, you know, air engagements with fighters to other CV players. And one of the big reasons why is because these are actually really, really weak fighters. For tier 8 planes, they're, they're pretty weak. Take a look at the average damage per second. 67, and this is with all the modules and all the skills possible, is not a lot of damage for tier 8 fighters because if you compare it to Shokaku, Shokaku's, you know, tier 8 fighters, they do 77. If you look at, let's say, uh, the Lexington, for example, well, I mean, you're not going to beat a Lexington anyways. Lexington just has, you know, like, if you, if you run into a, a fighter loadout Lexington with all the buffs that it has, along with the fact that it has a ton of ammunition, um, you're not winning that engagement. Just no way. And the fact that the Lexington has 7 fighters per squadron with AS, you're not winning that engagement. Um, if you compare it to even the Enterprise, Right, which has tier 7 fighters. If you look at the tier 7 fighters damage, 62. And of course, you know, the Enterprise just has tons of reserves. The Graf Zeppelin doesn't. She doesn't have that many fighter reserves. She does have a very, very healthy amount of torpedo bomber reserves. Overall hand capacity of 72 isn't really that bad, per se. Um, as Like I said, you do get a ton of strike. It's just that the fighters are... They're, they're underwhelming. And... If you can't win the fighter fight at all, or even can't even really contest the fighter fight, your strikes are going to have a lot more difficulty getting through. In fact, the favorite, you know, enemy CV of a Graf Zeppelin is really the Strike Lexington, as that is the one where you get to chew up all their strike while being able to do an outrageous amount of damage from your side. But if you run into even Enterprises or Shokakus or, God forbid, fighter Lexingtons. Um, you're gonna be in for some pain there. So for me, the Graf Zeppelin is that conflict for me. Like, you know, I'm very, very conflicted. Uh, I like the strike, obviously, because it's stupidly powerful. I mean, who wouldn't like that kind of striking power? But at the same time, I really dislike just how poor the fighters are. Um, the only other thing about the Graf Zeppelin that I liked a lot is the secondary armament. Yeah, that's right, you heard me say, secondary armament on a carrier. If you look at them, they don't have the world's greatest range, 4.5 kilometers. But what the Graf Zeppelin does have is a metric ton of them. For per side, you know, whichever side you decide to, you know, come from, 
the Graf Zeppelin has, get ready for this because this number is terrifying, 20 secondary guns. You know, in you know, if you remember the Enterprise video, I had this one engagement where the destroyer got really close and I just said, no way, I'm not engaging with the Enterprise because the secondaries are so poor. The Graf Zeppelin, I would absolutely just be like, yep, if I can dodge your torpedoes, I'm going to engage them with my secondaries. You will chew destroyers to pieces if they get close enough. And surprisingly, that's, you know, one of the Graf Zeppelin's major strengths, if you can believe that or not. Um, her aid is actually decent. Uh, again, you know, you do have quite a few of these 105 millimeter large caliber AA guns. Uh, and that combined with a 37 millimeter flak, if you spec for AA, you do have some decent uh, AA DPS there. When I say spec for AA, I meant like, you know, getting like AFT and things like that. Please don't, <laughs> please don't make the mistake and assume that I'm saying get modules because you don't need those. Get plain modules, right? Now, maximum speed, pr you know, pretty good, 32 knots. Uh, rudder shift time is actually really good at only 10.9 seconds. The graph really does, you know, it, it, she is able to turn. Turning circle radius, however, is a bit big, 1,140 meters, but she's a carrier. You know, as long as your, your rudder is reasonably agile, you can do a little bit of torpedo beating. Do keep in mind that this 10.9 uh, second rudder shift time is with the uh, steering gears modification. One thing I don't like about the Graf Zeppelin is the concealment. Now, if you don't have concealment expert, like I'm running an 11 point captain right now, so not running CE, without concealment expert, 14.1 kilometer surface attacked. People will shoot at you. Um, you're not that stealthy. So yeah, do keep in mind that your concealment just ain't that great. However, if you then go ahead and you get the skill for it, might be a bit better. Although there is a debate about whether or not you might want to opt for AA skills instead of concealment. That kind of is going to be up to you. All right, so let's take a look at the modules real quickly here. So if you take a look at the uh, module upgrades, I would personally say get air groups mod one, get air groups mod two, get defensive AA, get steering gears, get concealment. Those are the mods you want to get. In terms of your captain skills, it's very standard, right? You're going to go with aircraft servicing expert, go torpedo acceleration, torpedo armor and expertise, uh, air supremacy, and dogfighting expert as your first uh, 11 uh, points in terms of your captain. Then you can either offer for concealment expert, good idea, or you could decide to offer a combination of advanced fire and training manual AA, maybe. Um, you could also offer for manual secondaries, but I don't find that as useful as your secondaries are surprisingly accurate even without the skill, so that could be something interesting. All right, so um, one more thing before I jump into actual things I want to show you in battle. The armor profile of the Graf Zeppelin is actually quite interesting. If you take a look at it, she has 25 millimeters of deck armor, so that means that destroyer HE shells landing on your deck, not going to do anything. Although, although they can still, of course, shoot at your uh, side, which is a massive target, nonetheless. Um, but the other cool thing is, do you notice that the uh, graph actually has a bit of um, a turtle back? <laughs> Doesn't really protect you against battleship caliber armor piercing, but can offer some degree of protection against lower uh, sized armor piercing. So that could be something quite interesting as well uh, in terms of protection. All right, so uh, before I take you into battle, let me show you a few other things I wanted to talk to you about. So. Here is that secondary power in action, right? So I'm the last ship on my team. Um, there's an enemy destroyer camping in that smoke over there. I just got bombed, but I'm rushing that smoke because I know that DD is there. Okay, so there we go. Farragut comes out, 8,000 HP to start. Watch how quickly my secondary guns are going to take his HP down. Look at that. Phenomenal amounts of uh, you know secondary firepower on the Graf Zeppelin. Um, destroyers that would normally sneak around and go after CVs, Probably don't want to do that against the graph. You know, at least you want to be on the receiving end of all those guns. In the event that you are able to get your strike through, which means that the enemy fighters are in the wrong place, or you temporarily have them occupied, the graph zeppelin is very, very capable, like I mentioned before, of absolutely just demolishing targets. You know, you run to mostly full HP battleships, that's fine. You can either hit them so darn hard that they're out of action for the next little while, or you just outright kill them. And you know, here is just a couple of examples um, of me attacking. Now, because you also have three squadrons, it's a lot harder to kill off all of your attacking power as well. You know, a lot of times, even if one squadron dies fully, you are generally able to at least have two squadrons get in there um, and do some pretty severe damage. Like I mentioned, you do have very, very, very high damaging torpedoes. 
But once again, you know, my big problem was the fact that, you know, if you can't keep the enemy fighters busy or you can't win that fighter engagement, um, then once they run you down in terms of your fighters and you run out of reserves, they get to bully you pretty much all day long and really kill off your bombers and minimizing your ability to do damage. Causing you to really sort of cross your fingers and pray that you run into a match like this. And out of the 10 battles I think I've played so far, I got one of these, which is the enemy team had a strike Lexington. So thank the Lord, you finally have the ability to bully the enemy CV's air while being able to bring your tremendous striking power to bear. But this happened in literally one battle out of 10, which is like a 10% chance. In, if you were to take this uh, Graf Zeppelin into a competitive battle where the enemy CVs know what they're doing, you would lose. I think you would lose the majority of your battles because sure, you have, like I mentioned, that tremendous striking potential, but you just have so little ability to bully their aircraft. Shokaku's fighters have more DPS than yours. They have more survivability than yours. If you're running up against Lexington, they just simply have more planes and more ammunition. And even the Enterprise, you know, like I said, the Enterprise with its tier 7 fighters, even though its fighters in terms of its, you know, um, survivability and all, all that is pretty comparable, I mean, you're a little bit better, just think about the reserves the Enterprise has. The Enterprise can sit there and lose all of its planes all day long and still have enough planes left over in terms of fighters to come and bully you at the end. So, yeah, this is me being very, very conflicted about the graph. Like, yeah, the striking power is tremendous, and if you were to play it in random battles, you probably would be okay. I would say you'd, you'd be able to meet some degree of success in randoms, just because the enemy team is maybe not that well coordinated. Maybe the CB player you ran into is a little bit of a potato, but the very minute you run into, like, a semi-competent CV player, oh, you're just... You're just going to be in for a really rough time. The graph, I just feel like, it's not competitive, fighter on fighter. And once the enemy team is able to, the enemy CV player, or their team, depending, is able to take down your fighter numbers, then they can just have free reign over your bombers. Um, essentially, you could just be feeding the enemy CV experience in the form of plane kills. Thinking back to some of the battles I've had in the graph so far, you know, the, the sort of the thing that sticks with me the most is that I would get into fighter engagements that I'd be like, yeah, I should have this. And then the the planes, just the enemy fighters just didn't die, or at least not enough of them died, where I would be able to then use that uh, diminished enemy squadron number to my advantage. It just felt like, but I caught you in a good strafe. How come I only killed so many planes? It just doesn't... It, it was frustrating, to say the very least. And of course, not being able to kill enemy fighters, you know, made it very, very challenging for me to really have the freedom to go with my bombers to mess them up. In fact, the one thing, one particular moment that I remember, I caught an enemy fighter squadron, you know, dead to rights. I had them, executed the strafe, and I, I was like, this squadron should be dead. There should be nothing left. I should only have to engage one other enemy squadron now, and then what ended up happening is that that one you know, squadron that should have been dead was left with one plane, which allowed the enemy player to turn around with that one plane, lock me down, and then strafe with his other squadron, which was just really frustrating, because it's like, I should have had that kill, right? And, you know, that's my number one beef with the graph. The fighters are just really frustrating, to say the least. Um... But like, I, you know, but like I also pointed out, the, the striking power is also tremendous. If you get into a situation where you're able to get your strike through, you are able to do a metric ton of damage. And if there's like a push from a battleship, you get that strike in, that push can basically be stopped dead in its tracks. Because they have to dodge, they have to do something to try to minimize um, the damage from your torpedo squadrons. Because it is just such a large amount of damage. In this particular case here, two enemy Yamatos pushing down a flank. I'm just going to get in there, and I'm just going to drop. I'm taking a look at which one has more HP, which one is more of a threat. The one in the back turned out to be the one that I was going to end up dropping on. So here we go. 
bunch of torpedoes going in. Now, I do get lucky here. I, I do detonate that Yamato. I do detonate him. But, even without that detonation, I would have been able to cut off a good chunk of his HP. Again, you know, enemy CV here, being the Lexington. Not really much that he's going to be able to do. Um, as I do get to bully his strike aircraft with my fighters. But, comparatively speaking, if I was running into an AS Lexington... It would be the other way around. The AS Lexington would be kicking my butt. Again, so long as you know the CV player, the enemy CV player knows how to use a strafe. If they do, they pretty much will have you nine times out of ten. Take a look at the fighter statistics and you know compare the different fighters. On the left, you have the Germans. The center, of the USN. Right, you have the IJN. Look at it. The Germans have the least amount of HP, least amount of damage. Right? Yeah, they're a little bit faster than the other two nations, but I mean, look at the, the difference in terms of HP. Look at the difference in terms of damage. It is pretty darn big, right? The USN one, even though the damage is kind of close, take a look at the difference in ammo amount. I mean, that just gives the USN a ton more chances to sit there and strafe you to pieces. That, combined with the larger squadrons, the fact that each plane has higher vitality, you're just not winning that fight. So far against USN CVs, it's pretty much always been a losing endeavor. The only one that's been somewhat close has been against the Enterprise. And then you consider just how many reserves the Enterprise has. Not a winning proposition. Now, some of you might be looking at that speed and go, well, you have a speed advantage. Maybe you could kite them. Maybe you could do something along those lines. Um, yeah, you, you could. I mean, you, it is a speed advantage you are going to be faster than the IJN or USN aircraft by a few knots but um, your fighters have to get in there your, your fighters has to fight the other team's fighters because if they don't your strike is never really going to get through because the enemy fighters will just be like fine if you don't want to engage they'll just go chase after your bombers so you know you, you're almost forced to engage at times with the Graf Zeppelin's fighters and not a fun thing to do at all. So that's really the Graf Zeppelin uh, for all of you. You know, she is a ship with stupid, at times, levels of striking power. The ability for you to be able to hit an enemy ship is tremendous. You know, stupid levels of strike power. But you have very little in terms of fighter power. So that gives the enemy CV a way to deal with you. You know, they just have to take down your fighters. Well, the minute they've taken down your fighters, then they can go feast on your bombers. Right? So, yeah, that's the Graf Zeppelin. Um, I am very mixed about her. You know, like, I like her strike power for the fact that it can simply go around and blap stuff at will. But at the same time, I understand that there are severe limitations to that power, assuming the enemy CV is semi-competent. Again, if you run into a shit potato CV player, then it won't matter. You're just going to be able to bomb the crap out of his team anyways, and probably win your team the game. Right? It's against the more competent CV players who know how to strafe, who know how to maximize their fighters, you're not winning. You're just gonna, you're probably gonna end up tearing your hair out more than anything else. So, yeah, that's the current uh, preview look at the Graf Zeppelin, a uh, ship with insane striking power, but just nothing much going for it in terms of its fighters. Its fighters are just lackluster beyond belief. Anyways, in this battle, um, you know, we're pretty much winning right now. Enemy team is pushed into a corner right now, just. Trying to look around for targets of opportunity again. Um, enemy CV tried to do a CV snipe, I think. I think this is what it was. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get a fighter there. Squadron of four. Going to execute a strafe off here. So hold on a second here. There we go. There's a strafe. Yeah, you might even notice that the strafing power is kind of bad. Like, yeah, I managed to strafe them because they were all in a big lump. But you notice how long it took to kill off some of those planes, right? I mean... The strafe power on the graph just not fun. And, you know, you've had situations where you get a good strafe off against uh, an enemy fighter squadron and you'd be like, 
I only killed three planes? <laughs> That's it? That's all I managed to kill? Or maybe you get lucky, like, oh, I killed four? Um, it's only when you really catch them from behind and they're not aware that you're there do you manage to get a bunch more. But in most cases, yeah, the strafes are just kind of underwhelming. Um, and then, of course, you know, your own fighter's lack of HP means that they're very vulnerable to all sorts of things. AA, they're vulnerable to that. They're vulnerable to... Um, yeah, they're vulnerable to other strafes. They're just vulnerable all around. The only redeeming feature, really, is your strike squadrons. That's it. And so if you're able, and this is kind of, this almost goes back to the old 1-2-2 midway, which is like, yep, you're going to lose most times to Hakuryu. But if you're able to sneak in one or two strikes, then you've done a ton of damage. It's kind of the graph. You know, if you're able to sneak in that, like, one or two strikes, you could devastate a few ships. But don't expect to be contesting for air. Don't expect to be able to um, be getting your strikes sort of unmolested through to the enemy team. It's just not happening. You just do not have that fighter presence in the game. Um, although, again, if you're on the surface ship and the receiving end of a, you know, Graf Zeppelin strike, it's still terrifying. Anyways, so now that you've seen the ship, what do you think? Are you excited for her? Are you kind of more meh about it now? Um, do you feel like you really enjoy the striking power and don't care so much about the fighters? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, uh, this poor Lexington, who's pretty much not been able to do all that much in the entire battle, is basically going to get killed off right now. So let's take a look at the final results screen. Obviously, as a premium ship, the Graf Zeppelin is going to make good amounts of credits. So here, on 171,000 damage, made 658,000 credits. Base experience, 2,239, mostly because of those 48 plane kills. Uh, and of course, yeah, the, the damage does contribute a little bit. Uh, take a look, you know, there's some good blapping numbers onto enemy battleships. And finally, credits earned, take away everything, more than half a million. So pretty good numbers overall. Anyways, folks, hope you have yourselves a good one. Take care, and I'll talk to all of you again next time.